Happy Finish Friday, everybody. I don't know about you guys, but we are ready for some normalcy here. I thought you were going to say summer. But... <laughs> We're ready for summer, too. Mm -hmm. We've actually got a beautiful spring day here in Memphis, Tennessee, and it's 12 o'clock Central Standard Time. If you're just now catching us, we are um, excited to be able to show you today how to redo your kitchen cabinets in three different ways. So we get calls all the time. Because everybody's quarantined. Because everybody's quarantined. Um, how do I redo my kitchen cabinets? How do I do my bathroom vanities? How can I redo a piece of furniture? And what do I use to seal it? Do I need to seal it? What is it gonna look like? How is it gonna look different? And we thought we would kind of go over that with you today. So I have Gene, um, I'm fortunate enough to have him at home with me. To, with his paintbrush and so um and his sense of humor so um you know the odd thing is y'all are going to have to go shopping in your attics and uh your garages because habitat and restore are closed antique malls are closed so now is the time um actually people are cleaning out and they're putting things on the side of the road so you can probably get a good curbside shopping fine mm -hmm. um but Jean actually went to the hardware store and got some panels that we're going to be painting, showing you um, and simulating if you're working on a piece of furniture, your bathroom vanities, or your kitchen cabinet. So we're going to be working with a color today that I love. It's called Weybridge Classic. Um, W-E-Y. It's open. I, just it's, I know. <laughs> Weybridge Classic. It's just a gorgeous kind of green-gray color. It's got a little blue in it. Um, but it's one of those colors that goes with everything. So Weybridge Classic is gonna be one of your new favorites. Um, so we're gonna first go over just really quickly, a lot of you already know how to do this, but some of you are new to this. Um, and it's a scary project to go in and actually mm -hmm. paint your kitchen cabinet. So um, the, uh, the first thing you're gonna have to do if you're gonna paint your kitchen cabinets, as we tell you this all the time, is you're gonna have to clean them. And we talked about this last time because we're working on our bathroom vanities as far as TSP is not going to do it, Simple Green's not going to do it. Um, so tell them, Gene, just very quickly uh, why we need to do the clean slate. What, what we did, we, we formulated the clean slate to be a refinisher's grade uh, furniture cleaner. And the reason I say refinisher's grade because before they refinish a piece of furniture, and normally we're talking about stain and lacquer, they want to get all of the silicones, all of the grease, all of the surfactants because otherwise the lacquer won't lay out. It won't be smooth. There'll be um, issues with it. And it's the same with paint. If we don't get the oil, the grease, the grime off of the cabinets or whatever surface you're painting, mm -hmm. you will not get the best adhesion possible uh, with, the, with the paint or any paint for that matter. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to use our clean slate to do that. It is solvent based. The reason it's solvent based is because it wants to work against those waxes and oils. To and be waxes able to are all solvent based. They're all solvent based. And there are other products on the market that are not as thorough as this is. So, you know, some people have um, asked us actually this past week, they were painting their kitchen cabinets and um, she actually, right after she had painted them, she kind of nicked up against it. And she was saying that um, a part of it had chipped and we were asking as far as if she had cleaned it. One thing that I want everybody to remember um, is when you paint the one step on, it probably takes about 48 hours to actually bond, 72 hours. Don't go in, paint it on this dry, and then start taking your fingernail and going over it. It will bond to everything from linoleum to melamine to um, your, your oak cabinet, plastics, resins, glass, uh, wood, anything. So um, this, Gene, what kind of material are we working on today? You know, this is just a quarter inch MDF material that they've gone in and they have used a some type of CN, CNC machine to cut out so you get this texture that you're seeing of low spots and high spots. And right now I'm just getting all the loose stuff off before I start painting. So we're not going to be focused as much on painting today as we are what you do after you've actually uh, done your painting, but we thought 
Just as a premise, it'd be good. What do you need? Those little waxes, if I'm going to okay. hold this. Let's say this is one of the doors from your kitchen cabinet or bathroom vanity, and you're wanting to to uh, uh, paint it. And it's always good to take that door and drawer out and lay it flat. It'll be much easier to uh, to, to work paint. With. Yes. Fact, let me turn this this way so that I'm not reaching so far to get to it. So I'm putting these little pieces underneath here to raise it off of the surface because the uh, we don't want if I'm painting the edge, I don't want to paint my what I'm what I've got it sitting on. So if you're just now popping on, be sure and tell us where you're from. Send us some love and let us know um, what projects you're working on. If you are not part of our before and after group on Facebook, please join it. It's a beautiful community of people that love helping one another. And we love you sharing your, um, your projects. So I'm going to stir it up. Because once we, we've, we want to shake Come it. Come on over here, Jane. Give me a second, and I'm gonna. Oh. All right. One over here. All right. Get out of the shot. Okay. So now I'm just gonna start putting a coat of paint on. Also, this piece has already been primed at the factory, so it's not needing to have anything to seal it. Now your kitchen cabinets or your bathroom vanities, they are already going to have some type of finish on it. Let's say you actually splurged and bought new cabinets and they're unfinished. Any paint store, any paint professional will say you have to seal that raw wood before you start painting. Otherwise the raw wood is going to absorb the paint and you'll have to use a lot more paint so you're going to want to seal that raw wood. But the cool thing is a lot of the people that are going to be painting, they're painting over existing oak cabinets, mm -hmm. knotty pine cabinets. Um, the other thing too, a lot of you if you have cabinets from the 70s and the 80s that are more of a melamine material, actually melamine was big in the 80s wasn't it? Mm -hmm. um, which is actually like a particle board. It's almost a plastic type finish. It's a heated finish that goes on there. The one step paint will go beautifully on top of that. So now you can go from uh, white cabinets to a great color because we are definitely on trend for um, colors in our kitchen cabinets. All right, so I just wanted you to be able to see, this is basically what we did earlier. We are working with a new color in the one step formula. It's called Weybridge Classic. Um, the coverage is amazing. We really do suggest that you do two coats and Jean is working with our wedge brush so um, you can use the wedge brush. You need to make sure that it's a microfiber um, synthetic brush that you're putting this on. We recommend not using a chip brush when you're actually painting on um, your color. All right so Jean if you want I'm going to take I'm going to pull this aside and set this over here. Well, why were you uh, suggesting they use a synthetic or a microfiber as a function of the chip brush. Because it's going to lay the paint down a lot smoother. Good answer. All right, so we are going to, I'm going to let him get up here and help with this because this is a fairly large panel. And so um, what it does, we wanted you to be able to see a couple of things. Now, this has, um, this kind of has one and a half coats on it. And we love the fact that this is panel because a lot of you, this may be what your island looks like. Um, or your kitchen cabinets because they're whether they're recessed or they're raised but some people will say do I have to seal it do I have to seal the one step the answer is no you do not this is the finish I that, that was a trick question <laughs> this, it has a beautiful finish to it um, it's gonna wear very well if you're cooking spaghetti sauce or you have children that are gonna come around and their hands are gonna be able to be into their cabinets that you've got all you can clean it with Windex, you can clean it with soap and water and it's not going to affect it. So the answer would be you do not have to seal these if you don't want to. Correct. Now we're going to leave one of these plain because we want you to be able to see the difference between just having the one step paint plain then doing a wax 
and then actually with the matte sealer, what it's gonna look like. So um, if you want, Jean, we can start, that would be our, our plain one down on the end. Okay. So let's lay this down and go on, and we're gonna show them on the center. So it's kind of awkward being here, but at least it kind of helps us to be able to show everybody. So Jean, let's show them. If they want to be able to seal it with wax, um, what's the process in that? And then also, you know, just to tell you this before Jean starts explaining, when you go back to really fine, beautiful antiques or pieces of furniture, um, they have a wax finish on it, if they have any age to them at all. And because this is a, a beeswax, it's going to dry hard and it has a protective finish. Um, and it's gonna have a, a beautiful sheen, more of a furniture sheen to it, um, that you can enjoy for many years to come. And you don't have to continue to apply the wax. It's gonna be perfect the way it is. So we like the Mind Your Own Beeswax because it's, um, it's kind of in a liquid form. It's real easy to work with. Okay. Okay. Is that all right? We're going to tape it off just so we'll have a okay. nice Where you can kind of tell the difference. Clean, clean line between the two. How's that? Okay. And we'll do the same over here. Okay. So if you're just now popping on, um, this is Fender Friday, and we are going over um, how to be able to finish out your kitchen cabinets if you're using the One Step Paint, which is our chalk-based paint that has a beautiful sheen to it. Our new formula has essential oils in it, um, and it's so easy to work with. The coverage is beautiful. The sheen is beautiful and smooth. Um, so if you're um, an amateur, you're just getting started in this, I promise it's going to be very easy to work with. Are we ready? Yes. All right, notice I've put a little bit on, and I'm not going to, I'm going to put a little and then start turning our rags so it just it's more uniform that I'm not just putting so much on at one time. That's great looking. So it doesn't take much. Mm -mm, it doesn't well, take much. And notice I'll keep kind of wiping down an area. I don't want it caked up. Okay. I want it to be nice and smooth. Okay. Now, let's talk about the average kitchen as far as if they want to be able to wax it. You don't have to, remember. But in an average kitchen, if they want to be able to use the Mind Your Own Beeswax, would you say three bottles would be ample? Huh? I'd say three. Just, you know, if you've got a normal kitchen that's not a, not a uh, large summer camp. And the other thing is, too, um, you don't have to continue to apply this. Once you've applied it and you buff it, you are, you're good to go. You can enjoy it for many, many years to come. So you can ask questions. We'll be going back through on this Facebook Live and we'll be typing in and answering your questions. So um, I just, we wanted you to see the easeability of it and how easy it is. Because a lot of people will say, do I apply it with a brush or do I apply it with a rag? A lint-free rag is going to be the easiest, fastest way to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. And notice again, I'm going back over it and smoothing this out because when it dries, if I don't, I'll have caked areas that'll be very difficult to buff out. A lot of people forget to do that. So that's why it's very, I'm truly making this very uniform, very smooth. So then after he uh, gets that um, first coat on it, we don't have to put a second coat of the wax on, do we? No, what coats, please? What would be your recommendation as far as about how long does it need to dry? You know, the longer the better. But if you give it at least 30 minutes to an hour, okay. but if somebody has to stop and maybe come back a couple hours later, three, four, five, that's it's quite all right, yes. So then that way you're going to come back after it's dried. You can come back to it the next day if you want to, or a few days later, and just use a lint-free rag again and then buff it to a real pretty natural sheen. The whole point of this is to give it a beautiful, natural-looking patina. You don't want to really have... Um, high sheen, so um, that's a really beautiful natural patina. All right, so now we're going to move down here, and in this panel where you're able to see no, the, the one-step paint with nothing on it, which you do not have to seal our paint, we've done um, Mind Your Own Beeswax, which acts as a sealant, makes it real easy to clean, and it gives it a, a pretty patina, mm -hmm. and then now we have a matte sealer. Yes. So, Jean, do you have a preference? Do you want... If this was flat and 
and without the lows and highs, this is great because uh, if it's just smooth, it's, it's wonderful. But when you've got these lows and highs, it'll have a tendency to build up in those areas. So it's a lot easier for me just to go ahead and use a brush okay. as opposed to, to the roller. Okay. And also you have to be careful, the roller may have a tendency to leave uh, bubbles. All right. So we want to put just a smooth, uniform, light coat. Better to put two light coats than one heavy coat. And as, about how long should we tell everybody to be able to wait before they um, put on the second coat? You know, at least an hour, and again, the longer the better, because the more it dries, the easier it'll be because we're going to go back after this dries. Now we'll only get a coat on it today because of time. But what I'll do is I'll put one light coat on and then I'll take 400 grit sandpaper okay. and come back and do a, and lightly sand it and then do a second coat. Now why is that? Well, it just, it does a couple of things. One, it gives you more uh, coverage okay. because the paint being a chalk paint, chalk based paint, it's going to dry. It's uh, absorbing it's it. It's absorbing it. Got it. And so we're going to have it to where the second coat will actually have uh, better coverage. Okay. Love that. All right. So, um, so what we're going over today is the fact that one, do you have to seal, seal our one step paint on your kitchen cabinets, your furniture, or your bathroom vanities? The answer is no. It's very easily cleaned. Um, but you have a couple of options. So you can use the Mind Your Own Beeswax and then do one application and then buff it after about an hour and have a beautiful patina. Then you can use our sealant, which is a water-based sealant. Um, it does, it's not oil-based, so it has, it really actually smells pretty good. It's not offensive at all. Mm -hmm. um, but as Jean has told everybody today, we do wanna make sure that we put two coats and lightly sand in between them. And then we have gotten questions, especially this week, um, people asking, can they get a lacquer type finish on this? The answer is yes. So if you like a very high, high sheen nitrocellulose type finish, you can basically come back with our um, uh, Bright Idea lacquer. It's in a pink can and it's a high gloss clear lacquer and you can spray that on top of the one-step paint. It's gonna take probably three coats, wouldn't you say? Because it's gonna absorb into it. And you do wanna make sure that you sand with 400 grit sandpaper in between. This is if you're going to put the lacquer a top coat on it. But the lacquer top coat on the one-step paint now with our new formula is gonna give you a really high sheen. So if you wanna be able to have that on a piece of furniture, you can. So you've got a couple of options. You can keep it plain, you can do wax, you can add um, your uh, matte sealer to it, and you can make it with the Bright Idea and have a really high sheen lacquer. So hopefully today has been informative. You, you see, being able to rescue and restore your kitchen while we are in quarantine has never been easier. Uh, we are shipping every day um, at Amy Howard, and we hand mix each color for you because one of the great things about our new formula is the fact that we have 100 amazing colors. Today we're actually working with one of our new colors, Weybridge Classic, um, and it truly is going to be a new classic that you can use in your kitchen um, or any room for that matter, and it goes with almost anything. It's a gorgeous neutral. All right, so Jean, I want you to be able to just put some more of that on. If y'all can't tell, Jean totally gets into <laughs> projects and he wants to finish them. We want to just kind of hold this up so you can see. Don't pay any attention to, to the white because you'll notice it goes on white, but then as it dries, it's clear. So that way you can kind of see. Let me hold this up. So that way you've got your one step uh, paint without wax that you do not have to seal it. You've got it with wax that in just a few minutes we can come back and buff it, which will give it a gorgeous natural patina, which is one of my favorites. 
And then you can come back with the um, sealer if you want. We just recommend doing two coats. And then if you want a high sheen that would be down here, you can use our Bright Idea Lacquer. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of clarity on how to finish out your cabinets. Would you like me to buff that one? If you want to, yeah. Is that easy to... Yeah, um, not unless we lay it down. Um, well, I just want them to be able to see... Yeah, if you'll get one side, I'll get one side. So can you kind of see the sheen from that? I'm just going to tell you, my personal preference is doing a waxed finish because I just love the patina that you get from it. It's soft, it's very luxurious, um, it's easy to keep clean. You don't have to keep coming back and waxing. That is not an issue. Um, so many of the fine antiques we have in our home um, have just been finished out with wax, and we've enjoyed them for many, many years. So, happy well, finished Friday.